Welcome back here. So, watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa, President Mohamed Buhari on Tuesday commissioned the newly built international terminal of the Mutala Mohamed International Airport, Lagos. Mr. Buhari, who took a tour around the project terminal, has said the facility was built on a land mass of approximately 56,000 square meters uh, with 66 check in counters and has the capacity to process 14 million passengers every year. The new terminal is equipped with censored conveyor belt, seven jet bridges, 10 ultra modern cooling systems, a heat extraction in the baggage hall, ample space for duty free shops and banks, recreational areas for children, and very importantly, a 22 room hotel for stopovers, uh, amongst others. And these are uh, passengers who are just uh, sleeping in the airport before moving elsewhere. Now, the president also commissioned the Dangote fertilizer plant in the Ibeju Leki area of Lagos. He inaugurated the multi-billion dollar facility at that event, well attended by many political, traditional and religious leaders, as well as a key members of private sector from various parts of the country. The Dangote fertilizer plant is Africa's largest granulated urea fertilizer complex. It occupies 500 hectares of land in the Lekki Free Trade Zone and was built at about $2.5 billion. It is expected to help Nigeria retain $125 million in import substitution and provide $625 million from exports of products from the fertilizer plant. Now to help us analyze uh, these developments and the impact on the economy of Lagos State and Nigeria in general, let's welcome a public affairs analyst who joins us from Lagos, Mark Adebayo. Good morning to you, Mark, and thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Um, the new international international terminal at the Murtala Mohammed Airport has been a long time coming, and finally the president has commissioned it. What are your thoughts? A beautiful edifice, I might add, um, uh, a far cry from what we had before at uh, the international wing of the Murtala Mohammed Airport. Um, what are your thoughts on this this one? It's it's, a, it's quite beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it's so beautiful. It's so commendable. It's uh... It's so fulfilling. You know, when you travel as often as uh, some of us do, you, the, the kind of the frustration that you experience at the old airport, the, the, the embarrassment of, of it all, you know, was something of an saw. But this one now, it, it tells you what... The, no, every airport tells you what the country you are going to. Uh, looks like so it's, it's, your, it's your gateway it's gateway the first analysis of a visit of your country is how your airport looks like you know the beauty of it the aesthetics of it the effectiveness of it the functioning of it all these things combined tell the uh the visitor what your country looks like and uh, i'm so happy honestly i'm so happy about this i can't even wait to for, for my next trip to to come honestly mm. so it's so beautiful it's so it's something that i really i am proud of you know, we have always look at countries, even a country like uh, Ethiopia. Look at their airport. Look at the international airport. Look at Kenya. Look at Ghana. You know, wonderful airports. You know, so what ours used to be an eyesore, a, a very a kind of art egg that would not that would not be light. Uh, so it's so beautiful. It's so it's so nice. It's a good image for Nigeria. Uh, I wish the 22 rooms uh, would have been made like a 200 rooms. You know, for, uh, handling 14 million people, 22 rooms can hardly. Uh, can hardly be adequate. So that's the reason. But uh, right. it's commendable. I'm a Nigerian. I love it. It's so beautiful. Uh, you know, when I want to travel, I like to, 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 to be comfortable. When I look out, international travel, I like to be comfortable in the airports. I don't want an airport where there will be no, be no cooling system, where uh, the, uh, the public address system is a nightmare. I don't want to see that. But now, this one, I think, has rescued all from that embarrassment. And kudos to the federal government. All right. Indeed. Fantastic. Uh, uh, indeed, that's a, a pointer to something that could be uh, improved on, uh, talking about the number of beds in that uh, layover or stayover hotel, 22 rooms, with more like 200 with the volume of uh, traffic passing through the airport. Um, uh, l let's go back to the, the old, what is now the old um, international wing of the Murtala Mohammed Airport. Um, I I'm sure that at some point it was... Uh, an, an okay airport of, of good international standard for its time, um, which, you know, 
should not have been as dilapidated as it is today. And uh, I, I'm sure you can share some of your experiences at the airport. But let me share a few that some uh, have complained about, both Nigerians and non-Nigerians. Um, the conveyor belt is not working. We've heard of that before. Um, the light has gone off at the Motala Mohammed International Airport. We've heard of that before. Um, uh, the vice president saw a rat dangling from the ceiling. We've heard of that before. Um, oh, I got down from the aircraft, got into the airport, and the... Um, the restroom was stinking. I could smell urine coming from, from there. We've got the, the cooling is not working. We've got that before. What happened? Why did we have to have an airport that, you know, was in that such a sorry state? Well, um, first, let me apologize for the noise you are, you are hearing the drumming. Uh, I am directly opposite. My place is opposite oh, to okay. school. Yeah, right. So the children are, are beating the drum. So, uh, you see, it's not that we have heard about that before. Some of us have experienced it for uh, you know first hand before you know and the most embarrassing part is that the light just go off for like hours and there will not be light that we have seen situations whereby the airport staff are how to be using torch or their phone their phone touch to to process passengers that are traveling out of the once there's no light the cooling system will go off the heat will come on and so embarrassing very embarrassing you know, the experience was not but you in the 70s and the 80s it wasn't like that the airport was it, the airport was functioning very well in the 80s you know but corruption destroyed everything it was corruption the, the same corruption that destroyed africa's best airline nigeria airways of old it's the same corruption that dilapidated our international airport mm uh, international airport it's the same corruption it's the same corruption that killed nigeria airways was what led to the um, that, 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 that was a comprehensive audit of what a, a kind of inquiry of what really transpired, who looted what, what happened. There, there, there's, a, that, there, there's that document, but unfortunately, the government refused to take action on those who, who destroyed Nigeria Airways. So it was the same corruption that led to the dilapidation of, uh, of the old international airport. So that is it. The experiences were nightmarish, they were embarrassing as a Nigerian. You know, you are, you are flying, you are returning home, and then you are sitting with, with uh, expatriates who are coming down, and then they begin to say what kind of country. You know, and if it's a first-time experience for a foreigner, you can see this first impression lasts, lasts the longest, they say. If you go back and say Nigeria is a bush, Nigeria is a, like a kuta no koshi to all those things. So, uh, but I believe with this, I believe that uh, that, that is, a, that, that, that is uh, something that we have put behind us. Hopefully... Because Nigeria also lack Nigerian government lacks the culture of maintenance. Hopefully, this one will be maintained well. I okay. would have preferred that the maintenance of the of this edifice be uh, given to a private consortium. So, 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 so yes. Yeah, so, let's talk about that. Um, of course, we know the federal airports, and a very important point you've raised, uh, Mark Adebo, the Federal Airports of, uh, Authority of Nigeria, of course, we have them uh, there, and one or two other power states, um, National Nigeria Civil Aviation Authority is there. Uh, but as regards to the management of the airports, the one that we can readily talk about is the Federal Airports Authority of Nigeria. Yesterday, the President uh, reminded or urged the Minister of State for uh, Aviation, Hadi Sirka, to, to urgently fast-track the concession project of the federal government. You know we've been hearing about this for some years now, a couple of years now, that they want to f concession the airports. We hear that um, this project will not be completed and the concessioning process will not be completed. The bids, you know, going through the bids and, you know, the winner coming out till maybe the end of this year. Um, are, are you concerned about the maintenance of this, this airport, at least till the end of the year? Or do you think we can, we can wing it? Because, I mean, you have escalators, you know, <laughs> a lot of things there. You see, look, um, I am very much concerned it would have been proper, it would have been better for the concessioning to even happen before the commission, you know, so that, uh, you know, this uh, private, public-private, uh, you know, enterprise uh, collaboration between government and private sector would have uh, been able to, to make it work. You know, private guys handle things better than government. They handle, they handle business stores better than government. Like something like this, they would have handled it better. I wouldn't know why the delay, why, why delay the concession. I, I don't think... Uh, I mean, this is part of the thing that should have been completed before, before the commission. From day one, that concession should have been done so that the partners 
the governance will have taken over the maintenance, the management, the cleanup. Look at where you get to Turkey. You know, I, I'm trying to mention countries. I don't want to go to like America, but there are some countries that are probably on the same, on the same league with Nigeria that are operating their airports efficiently, effectively, and perfectly. You know, we are, it's not that you, somebody will clean. You know, you know, using uh, uh, what we call it, a manual visit to clean. You know, there are machines that clean the, the airport two four seven. Whether there are people moving or not, two four nothing. You, you can't you can't touch sand at the Turkey at the uh, international airport. You you can't see sand. It's it's been everything is been cleaned every second round the clock. You understand? So we need to you, we need to have that. But if you all these government people, they, they, they don't know. You know the way Nigerians handle government work. Like uh, it's no, it's nobody's father's work. Well, I wish it's very bad. It's some is uh, it's anti-social. Yeah. yeah. Let, let, let's let's quickly go to the commissioning of the Dangote fertilizer plant. Two point five billion dollars worth uh, of a plant uh, has capacity to produce three million metric tons of ura, ura each year. What, what's the importance of having such um, uh, a facility? Uh, come on board. Of course, this is the the um, inauguration of this plant. When when it fully comes on stream, what should we expect to be the contribution and the impact of this on the Nigerian economy? The immediate economic impact of this uh, wonderful fertilizer uh, company is the fact that number one, you see, in the next 10, 15 years, nobody uh, is likely to be interested in buying Nigeria's oil again. So we'll have to fall back to, uh, to agriculture. Agriculture will become the mainstay of the economy in the next uh, 10, 15 years. In the next 30, 40 years, even aviation fuel, planes will no longer be using fuel. You know, cars have been digital, digitized to, 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 to be environmentally friendly, and then they are not using fossil fuel. If fossil fuel will go out of... Uh, I go out of fashion. So Nigeria's economy will no longer be uh, dependent on, on, on oil. So we are going to fall back on agriculture. Remember that we, we have been told that more than 80% of arable land in Nigeria are still lying fallow without being uh, exploited for agriculture. So we'll have to fall back to agriculture. Now, 3 million, 3 million tons of fertilizer per year can take care of the whole of West Africa. So it, 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 it is handy for us that our economy now that will be agro-based, agro-based economy, this type of fertilizer plant will be able to help us to get better bumper harvest round, round the year. And I think it will lead to a revolution, revolutionization of our agricultural uh, practices, whereby we, we, we don't be, we are, we are not, you know, we are seasonal uh, farmers. We wait until the rain comes. In some other countries, they don't wait, they plant around three months, they, they plant round, round the year. So you don't wait until the rain comes and dry season. No, no, no. You just continue planting. So I believe that this fertilizer, three tons, uh, three million tons per, per annum, will be a huge. And we are told that uh, there is even going to improve on that. So you can take care adequately uh, the uh, fertilizer market of Nigeria and the whole of uh, West Africa sub-region. Right. And it would to provide employment. It will improve our agriculture. It would. Uh, it will. It will. It will, it will also help in the area of food security. So these are these are the wonderful advantages of this. And then being a private concern, you will see that there will be proper monitoring, there will be proper, there will be disciplined organizational management of the edifice, so that it will it will it will uh, function perfectly as it, as, as, uh, as it was proposed. So, so there will not be any. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, some people have also pointed, I mean, um, in 2020 or there about the president of the federal government banned the importation of fertilizer. I saw some uh, an infographic yesterday online showing uh, the countries that are dependent on Russian uh, uh, fertilizer. And with Nigeria uh, having a, an official ban on, on importation of fertilizer, um, the, the, the countries in, in, in the world that had a large importation of Russian fertilizer. In Africa, the, 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 the dot, the marking indicating the country was really quite a bit big. You know, the rest of Africa didn't have except maybe North Af Africa, the small one in Southern Africa. But this dot indicating where Russian fertilizer was being imported was in Benin Republic. And people started laughing because the, the amount of fertilizer being imported into Benin Republic, one would wonder if their population is as that of Nigeria. You know, so someone asked the question, are you thinking what I'm thinking, which is these guys are importing through the Republic and smuggling it into Nigeria. Um, so what, 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 what are the prospects for the survival of Dangote if this, this importation is going on and the smuggling is going on on this scale? We will have to apply the same approach that we applied in the area of rice that is now helping homegrown rice to thrive. Oh, so they're, still, they're importing rice through Benin Republic as well. In fact, the rice they're importing, you wonder if their population has quadrupled overnight. 
So it's no, being smuggled you know, in. You know, uh, Banana Republic is about half. The whole of the uh, Republic is not even, it's just a little bit uh, bigger than half of Ogun State. But it, yeah, so, so it, it probably shows they're smuggling the rice as well into Nigeria. That is, uh, you know, Banana Republic is uh, what you can call, uh, the, the Republic is, uh, especially their port, is, is just the satellite port uh, to Nigeria. It's a satellite port. So 90% of what goes into Banana Republic's uh, port come to find their way to Nigeria, you know, fire smuggling. That is what happens. Okay. When when they are bringing things to Benin Republic, okay. the Benin, Benin Republic is not the primary target of the of the importers. It is Nigeria. Vehicles, rice, the frozen chicken, so, so, turkey. Won't Dangote's plant suffer as a result of this continued importation, or you think this is the right way to solve that problem? Very quickly, very quickly. The way to solve it is the way to solve the rice uh, issue, you know. You know that's now you know giving impetus to, to local rice production. You the, the Nigerian customs, all okay. the security agencies will have to collaborate to ensure that all the smugglers are discouraged from okay. bringing uh, fertilizer, important fertilizer through the Republic. We can do. We have done it before. Mark we, we, we have to go. Uh, you've given us fantastic we analysis. We have this fertilizer plan to try. We have everything we have to do. Government must ensure that this fertilizer plan right. tries. All right. Thank you very much. Mark Adebo is joining us from Lagos, a public affairs analyst. Mark, thank you so much for your time and enjoy the thank rest you of your day. Me. And that's it on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's been a very interesting episode of the program, of course, with analysis of very interesting topics. Uh, do join us uh, same time tomorrow. But do remember also that you can follow us on our social media uh, platforms on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. You can search for us at Plus TV Africa. And if you'd like to watch our live stream, simply follow us on YouTube at Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. From all of us here at our studios in Victoria Island, Lagos, my name is Kofi Bertels. Keep watching Plus TV Africa.